Consider n equally spaced points on the unit circle, which has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Take one point in particular and connect it to every other point on the circle with a bunch of chords. What is the product of all the chord lengths that we have in this picture? Our goal is to answer this problem when there are two points, or possibly when there are three points, or four points, or five points, or really any number of points equally spaced around the circle. Can we find the product of the chord lengths no matter what n value we pick? The first technique to tackle this problem is to just investigate a bunch of small examples. Here we've pictured all of the instances with n ranging from 2 up to 13. It turns out that in each of these cases, the product of the chord lengths is exactly equal to the number of points that we placed around the circle. Is this true in general? Let's verify this computation in one instance when there are seven points equally spaced around the unit circle. We can imagine that these seven points live at the seventh roots of unity in the complex plane, which we've labeled zeta zero up to zeta six. Now let's imagine that each of these points is connected to the center point of the circle, which we've labeled z. Then we can compute the length of each of these line segments connecting the center to the appropriate root of unity, and we can multiply all of those lengths together as we've done here. As pictured, this product would be one because each of the pictured line segments is the radius of a unit circle, so has length one. This product is almost the same as we want if z is equal to zeta zero. But because z minus zeta zero is in our product, we divide out by the quantity the length of z minus zeta zero. Now we can take a limit as z goes to zeta zero, which means shrink z to zeta zero. But zeta zero is one, so this means that we're computing the limit as z approaches one of the magnitude of z to the seventh minus one over the magnitude of z minus one. Here we're using the fact that z to the seventh minus one factors into the product of the seven linear terms of the form z minus zeta i. But now we use the fact that z to the seventh minus one is evenly divisible by z minus one. So the limit of interest is now replaced by the limit as z approaches one of the sum of the powers of z from z to the zero up to z to the sixth. But then this is continuous at z equals one, so we can plug in one for each value of z, resulting in the sum of seven ones, showing us the product of interest is seven. But now we know exactly what to do for the general process when we have n points equally spaced around the unit circle. We assume the points are placed at the nth roots of unity, and then we connect each of these nth roots of unity with the center point labeled z. We get this big product here, which has one extra term than what we want, which is the term z minus zeta zero. Now we compute the limit as z approaches zeta zero, and we get the product that we're interested in. But zeta zero is one, so we're looking at the limit as z approaches one of z to the n minus one divided by z minus one. Once again, z to the n minus one divided by z minus one is the polynomial running over the sum of the integer powers of z up to n minus one. We can plug one in, and we end up with the sum of n copies of one. So we get a product of n. Let's see how to use this fact to discover some interesting trigonometric identities. Let's assume n is odd and we have n equally spaced points around the unit circle. The product we computed is the product of the chords connecting zeta zero and zeta k, which we call lk. If we remove the bottom half, we can then look at this product in terms of lk squared, where k ranges from one to n minus one over two. Now let's compute l sub k using the law of cosines. We know that this chord subtends an angle of two pi k over n, as shown here. Then using the law of cosines, we have that lk squared is given by one squared plus one squared minus two times one times one times the cosine of two k pi over n, which simplifies to two minus two cosine two pi k over n, which can be replaced by four sine squared k pi over n using a trig identity. This means the product we're interested in is the product as k goes from one to n minus one over two of four sine squared of k pi over n. But our previous computation of p showed us that this product was n, so we get this interesting product. Once we take square roots, we see that the product as k ranges from one to n minus one over two of the quantity two times sine k pi over n is equal to the square root of n. We can provide a similar argument when n is even, and in this case we get an extra two out in front and now the product ranges from k equals one to n minus two over two of two times sine k pi over n. And in this instance, we get that the product is the square root of n over two. If we couple these identities with other known trig identities relating sines, cosines, and tangents, 
we end up with the following list of six identities. All of these identities show us that these products of sines, cosines, and tangents, where the angles range from pi over n up to roughly half n pi over n, have these interesting products just in terms of n. Here's just one example of these identities when n equals 17. We see that we have eight products, so we get two to the eighth, multiplied by the sines of pi over 17 up to sine of eight pi over 17, and we get square root of 17. When we divide both sides by two to the eighth, we have this nice formula for the product of the sines of the angles pi over 17 up to eight pi over 17, where each angle increments by pi over 17. Now it's your turn. Consider the ellipse x squared plus five y squared equals five. Equally space n points around the ellipse. Pick one of them and connect that one to all of the others with chords. Compute the product of the chord lengths as we've done here. The first few values of this sequence are 2, 6, 12, 25, 48, 90, and so on as pictured here. Can you find a closed formula for these products?